<clears throat> this is the second part of a two-part series that uh, we began two weeks ago. <laughs> Usually it doesn't take three Sundays to do a two-part series, but uh, we had more the creek in the middle, and that was such a blessing. Well, never in my ministerial career did I ever think that I was going to preach on luck. <laughs> Unity doesn't believe in luck. Metaphysics doesn't support the idea of luck. We support the idea of divine right order, divine right outcome, perfect outworking of the law, whether it be a spiritual law or any <laughs> other kind of law. Laws work, gravity works. And yet, when it comes to luck, there is an entire collective consciousness, that vibrant, seething, teeming collection of thoughts of the entirety of humankind that believes in luck, that believes that it is chance or capriciousness that brings about positive outcomes in our lives. Have you ever had a spiritual awakening? <laughs> yeah. In which you realize this great truth, there is no luck. And you're so excited because it explains everything. Divine law explains everything and you're so excited and you just want to change the world. You want to go tell people, this is it. This is the newest, greatest idea. I've had this awakening and I want you to have this awakening too. So don't use that word luck. Don't use that word luck. I'm telling you, do not use that word luck. Eliminate it from your vocabulary. This is just like pushing water uphill with a rake. <laughs> if you've ever had this experience, just say also. Awesome. 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 Okay, let me take it a little bit further. Person A has one perspective. Person B has one perspective. And as they begin to have a conversation or talk to and at each other, they recognize that their perspectives are as different as can be in composition, content, and context as apples and oranges. And then the two people, person A and person B, decide that they're going to enlighten the other. So person A starts pushing water uphill with a rake, but there's no change. And the person B starts to push water uphill with the rake, and there's no change. But then they begin to have a dialogue. They begin to ask each other questions. They begin to come from a consciousness of curiosity and wonder. They begin to listen, and they begin to understand that they both are talking about the same truth. They're just talking, talking about it with different names. If you had that kind of experience, and if so, just say, ah, so, ah, so, ah, so. And thus resolves my struggle with luck. Thus ends my struggle with luck. Dr. Wiseman, Dr. Richard Wiseman, we've been taking a look at his book called The Luck Factor, says that luck is a positive mindset that allows us to look at the events and experiences in our lives knowing that we can put a positive spin on it, that we can have a positive view on it because of our mindset. In unity, we know that when we apply spiritual truth and we apply it in a positive and active way, then we're going to create and reveal the positivity that are and goodness that already exists. Dr. Wiseman says there are four factors that are involved in having lucky experiences. In unity, we use those same four factors. We call them applications of spiritual law. So two weeks ago, we went through two of them. Positive attitude of expectation. We found value in having a positive outlook of something, an expectant, an attitude of expectancy that good was going to come. We talked about a teacher who had some students. He thought he had a classroom full of geniuses. He treated them like geniuses all year long. And at the end, when those students in her grades of A's and B's, the principal of the school didn't know what to do with himself because he considered those very same students the bottom of the proverbial barrel. 
positive expectancy. Maximizing positive opportunities is also something that we found value in. We took a look at one of Dr. Wiseman's experiments where he set up a scenario, same scenario, two different people, one who had a propensity, was self-identified as unlucky, that was Brenda, and one who had a propensity or a self-identification of being lucky. Brenda walked right by the money on the ground, and she walked into the coffee shop, and she had a nothing, uneventful kind of experience, where Martin walked right by the money, scooped it up, was very excited, went in the coffee shop and took advantage of a very successful businessman sitting there and had a connection. So different outlook, different expectations, and yet they had two different experiences. We're going to start with factor number three today. Listen to hunches, which in unity we call intuition or spiritual guidance. Dr. Wiseman says that 90% uh, of the people who identify as lucky say that they use intuition when they are dealing with their personal relationships. And 80% of them say they use intuition when they make decisions and choices in their careers, all for their greater success. Now here's one thing I know about listening to intuition. You have to listen and take action. You can listen to your intuition all night, all day long. But if you don't take any action, then it's just the same as not listening to it at all. Does that make sense to you? And if so, just say also. Yeah. Also. also. Here's a quote from a famous scientist. It is always with great excitement that I wake up in the morning wondering what my intuition will toss up to me, like gifts from the sea. I work with it, and I rely on it. I thought it was kind of an obscure, obscure quote, but do you know who said it? Does anybody know who said it? Well, no, not, not him. Uh, I said scientist, Jonas Salk. So think about how unlucky the world would be if he was unwilling to follow his intuition. His intuition and his insight putting together all of those serums and chemicals and things to create the polio vaccine. Think about that. The value of listening and taking action on intuition. There's actually a second part to this, and that's taking steps to amplify or boost intuition. And I'm going to give you Dr. Wiseman's formula, and then you tell me what it is in Unity Speak, okay? Step one, find a quiet place. Meditation. Go into your closet. Go into your closet. Hush. <laughs> Step two, use technique to clear the mind. Meditation. Meditation. And step three, come back to whatever you're facing, whether it be an issue, a problem, or an opportunity, and in that higher consciousness, or in that mindset of luck, look at whatever's going on with fresh eyes. Kind of exciting. Okay, let's go on to factor number four. Turn bad into good, or as we say in the spiritual world, make lemonade. If something bad happens, see what you can do. Make some lemonade. Step A would be say, you know, things could always be worse. Dr. Wiseman did this scenario, and it was fictitious. He said, if you were shot in the arm and you had an unlucky mindset, how would you consider yourself lucky or unlucky? And if you were shot in the arm and you had a lucky mindset, how would you rate yourself lucky or unlucky? And surprise, surprise, the unlucky person, like Stephen said, this is such an odd question. Who in the world would ever consider themselves lucky for getting shot unless you happen to like getting shot? And then there was Marvin who said, well, I would consider myself lucky. Getting shot in the arm is better than getting shot in the head. Plus, I can always go to the newspapers and try to sell my story. <laughs> so he was looking to set up some kind of comparison. Now, in real life, there are many, many examples of this same kind of scenario. In 1995, a woman was hospitalized. Her name was Annette Ben-Tov. 
She was hospitalized in Tel Aviv in, after her second experience of a bus bombing within a year. The press came in, they interviewed her, and she said, I don't know whether to think I'm lucky or unlucky. I just don't know how to look at this situation. Well, that report was shown around the world, and a psychologist in Norway picked it up. And it ended that whole idea of considering yourself lucky or unlucky <coughs> caught his attention. He made it his life work. And he called, he, he called the phenomenon subjective interpretation. So if you are in an experience and you have a consciousness that is very directed to why me, you're going to get stuck in that consciousness and you're just going to say, I'm so unlucky. I'm so unlucky. I got bus bombed for the second time in a year. I'm so unlucky. Or you can have an entirely different experience. Look how lucky I am. I have survived two bus bombings and I'm here to tell the tale. He, he said this, both are valid interpretations, but the second one helps you hold on to optimism to feel the emotion of gratitude and to weave a larger narrative in which you are the lucky protagonist of your life story. And I love that because no matter what happens, we're given an opportunity for a reframe. We're given an opportunity to look for the good, to make lemonade out of those lemons that we've been given. We are the ones that choose. We're the ones who say, I'm going to place my thoughts and consciousness here, it's so unlucky, why me? Or I'm going to place my consciousness here. I can't wait to see what good comes out of this. I can't wait to see. Great, I've got a diagnosis. I can't wait to see what good comes out of this. The third part of this factor is believing that things will work out for the best. Rossini was an Italian composer, and he wrote the opera, The Barber of Seville. On opening night, there they were in full production, but the crowd was booing and hissing and throwing things, and there were several stage accidents. The prima donna was hysterical, and the leading man threatened to commit suicide. They looked around for Rossini, and they got very worried because they couldn't find him, so eventually they went to his house, and there Rossini was sound asleep. And they woke him up, Ma Maestro, Maestro, are you okay? And he's like, well, I was fine, I was sleeping, um, I'm fine. And they're like, Maestro, Maestro, the disaster, the fiasco, the opera, what are you going to do about it? And this is what Rossini is reported to have said. Well, eventually, we're going to show it to another audience. This one didn't work out so well, so we're going to play it to another. Now, the advantage of the story, this is what happened. The word got around that this opera was so horrible that even more people came to the second performance and they loved it. It became the favorite opera by the end of the week. And the Barber of Seville continues to be performed to this day, 200 years later. It continues to be performed. It's considered one of the greatest masterpieces of comedy within music. And it had a bad opening night. Things would work out for the best, thought Rossini, and it did. One last one. Find a benefit for the experience or event having occurred in the first place. There's a Chinese story about a man and his son and their horse who worked a poor farm. When the horse ran off and escaped, all the neighbors gathered and said, oh, how unlucky you are. And the farmer said, ah, so, ah, so. Well, when the horse came back, bringing an entire herd of wild horses with it, the neighbors gathered and said, how lucky you are. And the farmer said, ah, so. Then he sold some of the horses and he kept some of the horses, and his son was out there trying to break a mare, and he fell off the horse and broke his leg. The neighbors gathered and said, oh, how unlucky you are. And the farmer said, ah, so. 
Then the emperor's army came through and drafted and recruited all the eligible young men in the village. They went off to fight in the war, and many of them died. So the neighbors came and gathered around the farmer and said, How lucky you are. And the farmer said, Ah, uh, so. Get it in your mind that a mindset of being lucky creates and reveals the good that's already there. Get it in your consciousness that we have the ability by applying spiritual law, the law of mind action, so that form follows thought, that what we focus on grows, that what we think about, we bring about, that that spiritual law has an outworking that reveals the good that's already there. Have some affirmations for us to end with. Let's say them all together. I expect my good. I live in limitless opportunities. I follow my intuition. I see the good. Let's say them a little quieter, but with an equal amount of also ah, conviction as we prepare for a time of meditation. I expect my good. I live in limitless opportunities. I follow my intuition. I see good in everything. <coughs> Peace.